I'm Ben, I'm half the team that built Spectre, 2019's iPhone app of the year, and Halide, 2022 Apple Design Award winner. And now we're working on Kino, an app for recording video. And we have no idea what we're doing. Hey there, I'm Sebastian. I'm the design half behind Kino. When we first told people about Kino, the first question was, why? There's already tons of free apps out there. And that's not entirely new territory for us. When we first made Halide, I remember my mom even asking me, gee, aren't there a lot of camera apps out there already? And the reason is none of those apps work the way we want them to. The reason why Halide is the way it is, is because we made it in a very special way for ourselves. I'm a photographer, Ben is a photographer, we know what we like, and we made it the way we would like it. Now we were fortunate enough that enough people also liked it, and it allowed us to turn it into a job to support ourselves and our families. Okay, but this time it's a little different. I'm a photographer, I'm a designer, but I'm definitely not a filmmaker. I know how to dial in manual controls, I dabble in color grading, but I'm not a paid professional. And half the fun of this project is shooting videos like this and pushing myself to be better. Now on the other end of the spectrum are all these high-end camera apps and they let you do everything but at the cost of complexity. Doing simple things just feels too difficult. So as an example, the first party camera lets you shoot log video, but it doesn't let you dial in a manual shutter speed. And that's really important if you want to create that smooth filmic look. If you're new to filmmaking, you might refer to your shutter speed in terms of fractions of a second. Like right now, I'm shooting at 1 48th of a second to give this that smooth film-like look. But if you're in the film industry, you'll refer to it as angles on a circle. Like you'd say, I'm shooting 180 degrees, which it has to do with how motion picture cameras have these spinning wheels, uh, it really doesn't matter because everything's digital now. And referring to it in terms of angles is like calling the gas pedal of your car a horse whip. It just makes no sense. What if we can make an app that's for filmmaking, but not for filmmakers, to make making good video approachable through an interface and an app that isn't complicated, but still very powerful? At the same time, I think we can serve most of the high-end needs, maybe not all of them, but to figure out what those needs even are, we are going to have to do some research. One of the ways to do research is to make videos like this. And another way would be, well, we could go down to LA and meet the professionals. This calls for a montage. What? There's a little, there's a little problem. All those meetings were confidential. Okay, now that we know what our needs are, we can start figuring out what the product is gonna look like. In this phase, I make lots of designs and then I hand them over to Ben to implement something quickly so we can verify if any of these things actually work. By using the app every day in the real world, we quickly find out which features actually matter. For example, by shooting ProRes, we found out that your hard drive gets filled really quickly, so it's important that we launch the app supporting external hard drives. We also come up with features we never could have conceived of if we were just sitting there trying to come up with features. So, for example, I noticed that people taking video on a camera like one of these, people seem quite confident with that. They move around with it, handle it, go up, down, whatever, put their fingers wherever they want. If you see people recording video on an iPhone, usually they tap the record button and their fingers go out like that. And that makes sense. If you accidentally press the record button, your shot could be ruined. You could tap to expose somewhere and everything will be changed. No way to get back to what you were originally shooting at. We thought maybe it could be different. What if, for instance, the 
way you stop a recording is not just by tapping it, but it could be like the swipe to unlock gesture from an old iPhone. You'd have to swipe to confirm actually stopping your recording. So I threw together a version of the swipe to stop in about an hour, and it feels kind of weird. We're not sure if there's anything there, but maybe we'll explore it some more. Of course, what this app needs is that one killer feature, the feature that's great for professionals and amateurs alike. That one thing that when people see it, it just clicks and they're gonna know that they have to download this app. We call this I'm playing coy with all the features that are gonna be in Kino and not just to keep you on the edge of your seat. We're coming up with a lot of ideas and some of them are going to suck and they won't make it into the final app. But this is the time that we're gonna be exploring. We're gonna move quickly and well, to that end, this is what Kino looks like. Sebastian's already built designs that are way more polished, and there's nothing to stop me from going in there and shading and changing typefaces and adding animation, but that's not a good use of time right now. It's more important to try out new ideas and throw out the ones that don't work until we land on something that we're confident in. You could think of us right now as roughing out the big shapes, trying to figure out an interface that feels right answering questions about who this app is supposed to serve and what features need to make it into version 1.0. And then, once we're ready, we draw the rest of the owl. Stay tuned. So if you need to be doing commercial auditions, there's a specific technique in every ad for an actor when they're trying out the product. And you pick it up, you're, you're putting it up. Well, I just thought I thought it was interesting. 